Good evening. We'll call to order at 7.01 p.m. Monday, April 21st, 2014, meeting of the BUHS number six board. And as normal, we will start with the clerk's report. And we have approval of minutes. Uh, and on the agenda, it shows the minutes of April 7th, which were to be distributed, and the April 7th special meeting, which I believe everybody did get the minutes for the special meeting, but we <coughs> did not get the uh, regular meeting minutes around. Um, so we will do that, approve that at the next meeting. But uh, in the meantime, uh, the April <coughs> 7th special meeting, which was held in the middle school conference room, uh, I believe everybody has had a chance to look at. Is there a motion? That I move the minute, the special minutes of the special meeting of April 7th. Okay. Okay. Second. Second. Second by Mike. Okay. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to that? Good job, Ruth. <laughs> that in and that is, in and out of executive session is something else. Yeah. 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 No, but that's tough when you're in and out two or three times. I was there, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, all in favor of approving the minutes of the April 7th special meeting, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed or abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Ian and Melanie. Okay. All right, and we will <coughs> do the regular minutes, regular meeting minutes at the next meeting. Is there any, are there any communications? Sean. Well, I'd like to uh, just say how nice it was on uh, April 17th to see a 1991 graduate of BUHS, and she won the uh, 2012, her name is Anna Shafoun, she won the 2012 Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers, and she's studying in Wyoming, uh, so I thought that was Really a nice thing. She got to meet President Obama, and I thought, wow, that's cool. The UH is doing well. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Any other communications? Okay. Anything else for the clerk's report? Okay, if not, we'll move on to recognition of groups and or individual visitors, of which there are here to be none. So the next item on the agenda would be consent agenda. Is there a motion to go into consent agenda? I um, move to go consent agenda. Right, Russ? Second. Yes. Second by Laurie. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, opposed or abstain? Okay, we are in consent agenda and we will start as usual with finance. Okay, finance met on Wednesday, April 9th at 7 a.m. And we approved the following warrants. Numbers 1189, 1190, 1191, 1192,1193,1194,1195,1196,1197,1198,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1199,1
no one remember it's a significant scholarship uh, and in general over almost all except for I think one of the years since we've been doing it which is I guess six or seven years now um, we've been able to provide a really nice scholarship uh, for generally three students uh, and, it, and the scholarship repeats for them assuming they remain in good standing um, generally we've done um, three thousand dollars per year per student and uh, the, the way that uh, the mechanism for that is that we, this about this time of year the Finance Committee takes a look at how the fund has performed uh, we're obviously making awards just out of um, uh, dividends or whatever you want to call it not out of the out of the basic part of the capital uh, it has been a good year um, and uh, so we discussed the possibility of uh, how we would, how much and how we would dole out this, this year's scholarships. That brought up the question of how many kids are applying and are, are, are all the kids aware of it? And Jim was going to uh, do a little digging and see how many applicants there were. And I would suspect that probably by Wednesday when we have our next finance meeting that we'll be able to uh, uh, come up with a... Uh, recommendation for number of students and amount of money. We want to obviously preserve uh, preserve the fund, but when the results are good, the, the fund is managed uh, by two groups, um, Phil George uh, and is that that's Edward Jones, right? Yes. Yeah. And Andy Rome with Wells Fargo Advisors, and they they both have uh, performed quite nicely with this fund. So. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll, you know, look at look at the details a little bit more, and uh, I believe there'll be some nice awards for this year. Yeah, and we also discussed about making sure that all the students uh, that wanted to apply for such a scholarship right. that they made sure that they got enough right. Yeah, making sure the word is out. And they there. Jim sent an email saying there were an average of six, I believe, that applied. That was the yeah, uh, six so or I think seven it was six, seven, eight. So it averages out about six. Yeah. But to make sure whoever has an interest in that, to make sure they get the scholarship application. It's a it's a wonderful uh, wonderful opportunity and a wonderful scholarship. So, um, oh, what's the amount of the principal? Yeah. Well, it, it started out uh, just under three, I believe. Two. Well, the basis. Of, the gentleman said the basis was two and a half. Oh, two and a half. Originally. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and was split about evenly. Uh, and uh, we've there was one year with a I think it was probably 2008 uh, nine where the market tanked and we were not able to make awards for that year. Uh, but that's the only year I believe that we haven't made at least three three thousand dollar awards. And the next year, did we make awards to people? Oh, yeah, actually, I was not the board. Was I the board? I think I seem to remember some retroactive awards. Did the following year did we did we start picking up people who who were already in college? Or no? I don't remember that. I just I know that we jumped right back into it again. But it is a three year award. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess we might have if there was somebody that got it the first year and missed the second because we didn't award it and then was eligible on the third, but I don't remember. Yeah, was it on that sure the board it was another scholarship, but I seem to remember that. Okay, I think that was that was basically the finance <coughs> meeting, and we are on for Wednesday, Wednesday April twenty third, right at seven at seven a.m. in the morning a.m. <laughs> yes, okay. that's when like a.m. traditionally <laughs> is. Okay, thank you. Uh, planning and policy has not met. Okay. Is there are there any uh, policies on the horizon? Nothing, Nothing has come down yet. It's so time to start reviewing some, huh? So we don't get a million backed up. Uh, teacher curriculum committee has not met, but we're meeting two weeks from tonight at six o'clock in this room, which is May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. Yes. I'm sorry. What time? At six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah. P.M. P.M. Okay. <laughs> the one in the evening. 
Just making sure. We could do AM if you like. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> I'll miss that. <laughs> BAMS committee. Um, BAMS committee met, a uh, abbreviated version of the BAMS committee met this morning um, at 745, and we spent some time talking about the summer, the summer enrichment program was going to look like, how, what the su whole summer program was going to look like, the mixture of summer learning and um, the, how the BEAMS program was going to interact with the summer program. Um, and then we also talked about some staffing issues, which um, Ingrid's going to bring forward during her report. And we are also going to meet on May 5th at 7.45 a.m. in the morning on May 5th to go over 1% funds that day. Okay, thank you, Ricky. Mm -hmm. WRCC committee has not met, and other has not met. <laughs> okay, um, so that, I believe that covers uh, consent. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? I moved. You move Let's it, I'll close. second it. We'll give it to Melanie this time. Okay, Melanie moved, we second it. Okay. <laughs> You All have to favor. jump quick. Uh, uh, right. Opposed or abstentions? <laughs> Hearing none, consent agenda is approved. And we move on to administrative reports. What order haven't we done in a while? Michael hasn't gone first in a while, has he? How about you do that? All right. Thanks, buddy. So, a few things tonight I want to share with everyone. Last Friday, <coughs> Vermont Technical College held a career day for uh, high school students across the state of Vermont and they were very aware that it was spring break for a portion of the uh, state but we actually had uh, 10 students sign up to attend and our horticulture teacher Sam Rowley uh, drove one of our buses and the students up and had a great opportunity to check out different careers and different program offerings that VTC offer. So I do want to thank uh, Tom Yan and Karen Naceris for organizing this great opportunity for students during uh, spring break, which some students probably don't do a thing during that time. So that was a great opportunity for these kids. On May 13th, we'll be having our last uh, RAP board meeting at WRCC. And Dave Levitt, our SREB, Southern Regional Education Board consultant, will be at the RAB meeting explaining uh, in very good, great detail the process that we, we will be starting next year. And so I invite uh, any of you <coughs> excuse me, to join us that day starting at noon <coughs> if you want to learn more about the SREB process. It'll be a great educational uh, time, well spent. On May 31st, which is a Saturday, we'll, we will be having an open house at our 10 Wilson's Wood Construction Trades house on the corner. Hopefully the, uh, the corner will be fixed by then of the house. And what we're going to be doing is showcasing the uh, <clears throat> programs that have helped build and design the uh, house for over the last few years and maybe hopefully get somebody that's interested in purchasing it all as well is our goal for the day. I've been working with an organization in town called SEON which stands for Sustainable Energy Outreach Network and Guy Payne is the director of the organization over the past six months and his goal was to when he first approached me was to create a class for the entire state of Vermont career center teachers within the building trades areas to educate them about the building green and building science program the initiatives that are coming down the pike and very aware in the building construction world and so we've actually we're able to work with the Agency of Education and got off the ground two days this summer at uh, BTC, Vermont Technical College in Randolph. It's uh, two, two sessions for teachers to take part in. So this is a great opportunity for uh, 
construction trades teachers, uh, plumbing, HVAC, uh, science teachers in, in the high school arena. So we're very excited to offer this type of programming and to work with uh, organizations in the community that, and spread it across the whole entire state. So that's all I have. Just to ask, related to the RAV, uh, the typical RAV membership would include uh, Ruth, Bob, and is there another person or two that have attended? Laura, you are attended, I'm not necessarily. You're not a regular honest. member. Yeah. And, uh, I, again, I would just encourage anybody that's available, um, you said the date, May 13th, 13th at noon, it would be great if you came because um, as Michael has reported in the past, the whole um, Tech Centers at Work program involves a lot of professional development and strategic planning for um, the career center. So, and Dave's been a great, great asset. So. Okay. Last time you uh, mentioned the new website, referred us to it. For yes. the, those watching out there, would you just care to give us the URL again? So, um, it is. It's really a or would you like me to? If you have it right here. Correctly. I don't want to give the wrong one. www.wrccvt.com. Yes. Thank you. It is a little tricky. You got a lot of easy to I encourage you to check it out. W. Yeah. It's a great, great site. Okay. Moving south. Okay, so uh, I guess I'm south. Um, so today's our first day back from spring break, and uh, you can tell in the building that, that people have had a, had a week off to <coughs> kind of recharge and refresh. Um, you can see the staff, you can see it with the students as well. Um, we shift our attention now towards our seniors and getting them ready to graduate and filling in all those last minute details of community service and uh, making sure all of their transcripts are in shape. And so we started that process and uh, no surprises, which is good. Um, so we're pleased about that. Over break, we did have our spring play, Crossing Delancey, um, April 11th and 12th. Um, uh, small crowds, but enthusiastic crowds, and uh, the play was very well received, and so uh, Peter and, and the rest of the crew did a great job of uh, putting that on, so we're very pleased. Um, also during break, we had nine students and two teachers uh, go to Costa Rica for two weeks. And they uh, used their Spanish and learned about life in the country. They spent some time in the, I'm going to mess this up, Escuela Bilingua Via Paricio Elementary School. And uh, they spent Monday through Saturday at that school with host families. And it's a pre-K through sixth grade. And our students work with them for that week um, on what life was like in Vermont and in the United States. Um, they also did some work in the rainforest. And they had an extremely interesting ride home. Um, they had a flight delay, and American Airlines said there would be a shuttle bus waiting for them when they got there. And when they got there, they had a business card, and they called the number. It was disconnected, and that shuttle company didn't exist. Who gave them that? Somebody from American Airlines. And so they ended up getting taxis for two uh, vouchers for two taxis that drove them all the way from Logan to the BUHS parking lot. Oh, um, I, I asked um, one of the teachers, if, you know, are the students okay? They're like, oh yeah, they played hacky sack, they were fine. So that was good. <laughs> um, and it's interesting, at the same time we got that you know, uh, that trip, um, we got a letter from a graduate, Jeff Frizzell, who is right now at Anna Maria College, and he's studying um, EMT science. And he's actually doing an exchange right now in Costa Rica. And he just sent us a very nice letter detailing his time in Costa Rica and thanking us for his uh, three years of, of uh, Spanish at BUHS and how key it's been as he's been in there translating for his professors who don't know Spanish. So, um, you know, BUHS uh, continues to resonate with kids even after they leave here. It's great to see. Um, last, we received HCR 271 a concurrent house resolution uh, which officially recognizes BUHS and 11 other schools as the first Energy Star certified schools in Vermont. I mentioned it earlier, but now it's official that the house is, has recognized that. 
And along with that, um, we are going to receive a 2014 Governor's Award for Environmental Excellence, and that will be presented uh, May 14th at UVM. And a huge uh, thank you and uh, congratulations to Robert Clark, who has done countless hours of work um, figuring out how to save every single lot he could. Mm -hmm. And so his work is paying off, so we're very proud of Robert and what he does. And last but not least, um, the public address system is up. Can we, can we Absolutely. that yep. proclamation on since you're not going to read all the whereas's? No. Well, I, whereas I was going to, no. Um, <laughs> and, and, of course, our public address system is up on top of the press box. Now it works. It sounds great. And, I heard uh, it in my office today. Yes, you <laughs> did. Good. So we're very, we're very pleased. They did a great you're, job you're installing it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Will we get a uh, visit from the Costa Rica uh, students to give us a report? Oh, that would be great. They'll be up here next next fall. Yeah. From high school students will get. Not those. Not the uh, elementary well, students. Oh, we're, we're talking about the group that just. Oh, you want our own kids yeah. to come back? Yeah. Normally, when we uh, <laughs> uh, there's a program. I'll like translate that. for you, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> no hoplol. <laughs> See, we <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can we have it on the sink out of my <laughs> uh, I can do we'll No. Yeah, no, I'll, don't I'll worry about I'll that. talk to them. You said C. Okay. C. C. Thank you. I heard it was a great trip. Who gets to go up to UVM to get the award? Um, Robert's gonna go, I'm gonna travel with him. Good. And um, anybody else that wants to come along for uh, to see us get recognized. So it's great. Excellent. So oh, he certainly uh, be the most recognized. Absolutely. Not that I'm minimizing your part of it. No, <laughs> no minimize away. Robert is Robert's pretty phenomenal. Uh, he's done a lot of work on that. Okay, Ingrid. Hi, all. Um, so, um, um, what's your name? Ricky mentioned. I was the one that showed up. You have already started. <laughs> He mentioned our summer programming, and this is our uh, fifth year of um, really solid enrichment and remediation programming for our kids. We have eight weeks this year, one week more than last year. It begins with a humanities camp funded by a, the Vermont Humanities Council grant of $2,000 with a focus on Japan, its culture, oh, yes. and um, language, and it ends with a wilderness camp outdoors. They are the bookends to what goes on in between. In between that, there'll be um, four weeks of BAM summer learning program, four days a week from nine to three. And, and that includes a collaboration with BEAMS. So it's summer learning in the morning, enrichment remediation with BEAMS funding uh, camps in the afternoon um, for kids. And then there are a couple of other weeks of BEAMS camps sprinkled in there too. So it's a very rich uh, program. Basically, our building will be populated with kids the months of July and August this year. Um, all day, basically, which is great for them. Um, this is our transition season, as has been mentioned in the past. Today we visited 17 really wonderful children at Guilford. And that was our last visit of the sixth grade classrooms. Um, they were really terrific. Um, they were fun to be with. Um, and then they will come up here for a visit in May. We're scheduling those already. Then we had a meeting for all the sixth grade parents in early April. Um, so we're moving through that transition plan too. Um, Staffing, so Ricky mentioned staffing. Um, I do have two candidates to bring to the board for your consideration this evening. Both are from math positions. One is a regular contract and the other one is for a one year position. So for the regular contract, our team um, went through a process that lasted about three weeks from beginning to end and we unanimously agreed on Sue Boss to receive the regular math uh, position. 
She has been uh, in a one-year position with us this year, um, applied for the position, and um, rose right to the top of our team. Uh, she has about 25 years experience in education in a variety of ways. Her undergraduate degree started in agriculture and then uh, she got a master's degree in education from Antioch. So I'd like to recommend Sue Boss to you for your consideration. I move that we appoint Sue Boss as the regular math position at BAMPS. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? None. It's unanimous. Thank you. And the second one is for a one-year medical leave position. Um, and that candidate is Jackie Colley. She is well known to many of us at BAMS. She's a BAMS and BUHS uh, former student of both schools and is finishing up her degree at University of Delaware, will graduate in May. Uh, undergraduate is elementary with a concentration in middle school mathematics. And she's done her internship in a middle school in Delaware in mathematics. She did come up to interview in person, and then at our request, she sent us a videotape of a lesson she taught, and, and we watched that. And, um, again, uh, as a committee, we felt very strongly about Jackie. Uh, I move that we appoint Jackie Colley in the one-year math position at BAMS. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Also unanimous. Thank you very and much. And how do you spell the last name? C-A-W-L-E-Y. -E That's really pretty cool, I think, yeah. to have yeah. somebody, a fairly recent mm -hmm. graduate. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice. I have a question. Yeah. On a medical leave of absence, how many years do we grant those? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, number, this is the second year, I believe. Does it go on ad infinitum? Mm -hmm. or is there a limit? Mm -hmm. We have a case um, by case. It's case by case. We have a disability plan that would um, you know, cover so many months, so many, you know, typically no more than two years. Okay. And we still need to fill an academic support position, which I believe was presented to you at the last meeting <coughs> of the resignation. Uh, we've begun those interviews already, um, not done yet. And um, we have a two-year special ed position. I know that you acted on that request a few meetings ago, teacher moving to Nigeria for two years. Mm -hmm. So we need to fill that position. And I think we're closing in on that one, but not ready to present it yet. Okay. <laughs> about the central office? Uh, we will um, talk about a um, Act uh, 250 request for the Red Clover Commons, uh, 53 one-bedroom units. Uh, I think they're planning to have it right by between uh, the Walgreens and Wilson's Wood. Wilson Wood. Uh, there'll be no impact on the schools. They don't anticipate any K through 12 grade students. It's essentially replacing the Melrose Terrace uh, pro uh, property. And uh, so I, I would recommend that the board um, let the superintendent communicate with them that there's really no impact to the school system, so we should just approve their request. Yeah, well, that's under new business, and there's nothing between what we're doing now and new business, so they can... Yeah, and I was just, just going to update you on a couple of upcoming yeah. events as well, so... All right, well, we can, we can go ahead and vote on, vote on this, and you can okay. have the floor back again. Great. Okay. I move that we authorize the superintendent to communicate that there's no impact on the schools with respect to the Red Clover project. Second. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Um, yeah, what kind of development is this? Because it's, it may not have any kids, but it's right next to the school. Uh, it's in, a, in an empty, what, what's an empty lot now? Yeah, it's, well, it's basically relocating those, those residents, uh, a good number of which are seniors. 
um, and uh, uh, I haven't seen a design uh, it was, picture yet. But there was uh, some pictures in the paper gosh, a yeah. month or so ago. Yeah. Maybe it was the Commons, not the Reformer, but one of the papers I saw some, some pictures of it. It was a multi-story building. Um, the one right by Walgreens? Yeah, it's going to go in that dirt, with that, that dirt lot between yes. Walgreens and that first house there. So is there any, um, and I guess where the, there's a backside of another yeah. business there, I guess it's going back all the way through. Yeah. Does it impact um, the traffic situation that's already a little tricky coming into school in the morning? So? No, I don't think so. It's, it's 53, actually 55 uh, units. 53 would be one bedroom, uh, two or two bedroom units. Um, the people uh, 55 years of age, you know, it's kind of a, I don't know that it qualifies for elderly housing. Um, just thinking about the impact on West Avenue with Melrose Terrace, I don't, I don't really think it does much in terms of a lot of being in and out of traffic. Um, and that's right near Academy School. I used to live near there, and I didn't find the people traveling into or out of that mm -hmm. development to be really any sort of overwhelming load on Western Avenue. And I, I observed it at different times of the day, and different days of the week and whatnot. It's, it's a good location for them because it's uh, accessible to a lot of things, uh, even walking, you know, mm -hmm. hospital and some stores and so forth. Uh, and that lot has been virtually unused Forever. <laughs> Forever, really. Uh, Raymond S. Roberts used to park a few trucks out there. Yeah. And, uh, I just wanted to make sure that Yeah, I, I don't think too much of a, might be a good opportunity for the students to interact with. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can come on shore, folks. Yeah. You might want to just send that down so people can take a look at it. It's been a short time. Okay. It, is, it has been a short time for a long time. They're going to have to use the sidewalk. They're going to have to keep it a long way. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, all in favor of approving the motion? Signify by aye. saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So just a couple of other dates, and, and usually these activities really affect uh, the whole district, but um, you know we, we will um, do a Celebrating Diversity Day again, um, May 2nd, and again that's district-wide. I know the high school and middle school do a lot of activities during the day. They do have some um, presentations and people that have be doing some things in the early evening as well and that's true throughout the district so the evening activities or early uh, early evening late afternoon 530 at uh, Pliny Park there'll be some activities that start out outside at 530 and then they'll move into the River Garden at uh, 6 o'clock and it's probably going to run until about 7 730 um, this year the town really wasn't um, in, involved with um, a lot of the activities, but since the schools do so much during the, um, the whole week, and really the spring, uh, we felt it would be good just to continue that, that um, celebration. So it's nice that that will be happening. A kind of precursor to that is happening this Wednesday, uh, the 23rd, at the BAMS Multipurpose Room. Uh, that begins at 5.30. It's uh, uh, sponsored by the Diversity Equity Committee. A uh, poetry project where uh, Michaela Sims has uh, organized really a nice activity that will bring a guest poet in, and then students will be doing some of their poetry work that they've worked on throughout the course of the year. Um, I think most of the students will be from the elementary through middle school age. Uh, I'm not sure if any high school students, I, probably Michaela has drafted some of the high schoolers that would be doing some things to help organize with the younger students, but that's a great activity. So if you're, if you're available Wednesday night at 5.30, uh, there'll be some light refreshments, and then at six o'clock we'll have the guest poet, and then students will start their presentations right after that. So it should be fun. Um, and I think that's it for me. Okay, board chair, I have nothing else.
Um, I don't believe there's any unfinished business, and we have already discussed the one item of new business that's on the agenda. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Ruth? When are we going to hear Mrs. Crisco, Mr. Perrin, and Mr. Burnett sing the Star Spangled Banner over the new <laughs> PA system? <laughs> Well, that throws a monkey wrench in because we've been rehearsing the school song, so <laughs> it's going to be set back now. Careful with some wish for you. Well, I would do it if, if, if uh, Mrs. Barton joined us in harmony. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want that. <laughs> you would not want that. I think pre-graduation would be a nice event, yeah. wouldn't it? Kind yeah. of to kick off the activities. <laughs> do a solo. <laughs> Three part harmony. Anything else? <laughs> I can see the wheels turning over there. <laughs> if not, is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Second. second. Now second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.